Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to join today's Love and Peace Forum. This is Kenny Zhang, Four Power Volunteer and Tai Chi Man Dizi. Four Power stands for Federation of World Peace and Love. It's a non-government organization established in the U.S. in September year 2000. Tai Chi Man is the martial art and spiritual group that helps cultivate the balance between physical and mental conditions for human beings. Dr. Hong Daozi, President of Four Power and John Maron of Tai Chi Man, has been traveling more than 100 countries in the past 20 years to promote the love and peace, which is also Four Power's main mission to the, to the world. September 15 marks us the Four Power International Love and Peace Day, and also Four Power's 21st anniversary, as well as the UN International Day of Democracy. We would like to take this great opportunity to support September year 2021 as Love and Peace Month and invite our distinguished guests to share their perspective on how to promote love and peace through text tales, human rights, democracy, and conscience through the Taiji Man text case in Taiwan the beacon of democracy in Asia and around the world. Before we invite our honor guests to share, uh, let me also invite you to watch a video that recorded Taiji Mendez participate in the International Religious Freedom Summit in Washington, D.C. in the U.S. on July 13, to raise the international awareness on Taiji Man's false test case and advocate that the religions and beliefs should be safeguarded. So let's watch the video. Faith and political leaders met at the nation's capital on Tuesday, July 13th, for what organizers called the most important religious freedom event of the year. The three-day IRF summit advocates for religious freedom with a goal of tackling discrimination around the world. Former U.S. Ambassador for International Religious Freedom, Sam Brownback, helped launch the meeting with a focus on international bipartisanship. This is an event sponsored by the International Religious Freedom Secretariat. All the major religions of the world are represented. And we've got one mantra, religious freedom for everybody, everywhere, all the time. It was important for Brownback to tout the conference's diversity in both its attendees as well as within their organizing co-chairs. Dr. Katrina Lantos Sweat is the former chair of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. I was very honored to be asked to serve as co-chair because one of the things that we want to underscore throughout this uh, summit is that international religious freedom is a cause that brings people together. I'm a Democrat. Sam Brownback is a Republican. Those differences are irrelevant when it comes to fighting for the fundamental rights of people around the world to live their lives in accordance with the dictates of their own conscience. Many individuals and groups attended the summit to raise awareness for their freedom causes. One of the more prominent participants is the Action Alliance to Redress 1219, a coalition that seeks justice in the Taiji Man Qigong Academy case. Taiji Man Qigong Academy is a spiritual group in Taiwan and the U.S. They believe they are being religiously persecuted in democratic Taiwan through a tax evasion indictment 24 years ago that has reached Taiwan's Supreme Court. The members of Taiji Man Qigong Academy are here at Washington, D.C. to raise international awareness of our case and call on the government officials of Taiwan to stop persecuting us and return the sacred land to Taiji Man Qigong Academy. So we want to call out to um, government and other religious groups and spiritual groups that taxation should not be used as a tool to persecute um, religious groups and that f the freedom of religion and belief should be safeguarded. In a July 13, 2007 ruling, the Taiwan Supreme Court found Tai Chi Men Qigong Academy not guilty of tax evasion and cleared the group of all charges. But Taiwan's Taxation Bureau disregarded the court decision and continued to impose taxes on Taiji Men Qigong Academy. Kenneth Jacobson, a professor of law at Philadelphia's Temple University, spoke at the summit and summarized his years of research on the Taiji Men Qigong Academy case. Taiwan is an island of democracy, a beacon 
of democracy in an area that has absolute turmoil, political turmoil, as well as oppression. But what has happened here has emerged from the conduct of some rogue bureaucrats and government officials that has now been tolerated by the government itself. During a 2010 public hearing in the Legislative Yuan, Taiwan's Ministry of Finance openly agreed to resolve the case within two months. That has still not occurred. As a result, Taiji Man Qigong Academy's sacred land was auctioned and nationalized on August 21, 2020. While Dr. Katrina Lantos Sweat reserved opinion on the case, she acknowledged that an injustice has occurred. There's growing concern among a range of legal experts and people who really understand the rule of law that this is a situation where an injustice has occurred that needs to be rectified and acknowledged. It was important to the Action Alliance to affirm the persecution against Taiji Man Qigong Academy on U.S. soil, where Taiji Man Qigong Academy and its leader, Dr. Hong, have been welcomed openly in years past as international ambassadors of peace and goodwill. The mayor of the District of Columbia does hereby proclaim March 22, 2000, as Taiji Man Qigong Academy Day in Washington, D.C. So Mayor Harris welcomes Dr. Hong. And he declares September 16th today as Dr. Hong Day. And we congratulate you. Tom Bates, mayor of the city of Berkeley, hereby proclaim August 5th, 2005 to be Federation of World Peace and Love Day in the city of Berkeley. Attendees heard many similar stories during the inaugural multi-day summit, where its main goal was to unite and help one another find solutions and prevent problems from reoccurring. Sam Brownback encouraged foreign policy and religious leaders to work together to solve foreign policy issues. We just really got to get the civil society and religious leaders together to stand for each other. If we can get these relationships built across religions, I think we can really address a number of problems. And this is Taiji Men wishing you love. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Do the reflections and learning from IRF Summit. It's obvious that illegal tax bills cannot be used to prosecute, discriminate, and even harass the religious and spiritual groups, who are also the people and citizens that the government officials should serve and protect. So now, let's welcome Ms. Winnie Lu, the Certified Psychological Counselor at Primary School to share her observations and perspective. So let's welcome Winnie. Hi everyone, my name is Winnie and I'm honored to be able to participate in this discussion. I'm a teacher and a mother of two children. For me, Letting children grow up in a safe and friendly environment is the most important thing. Thank you to Dr. Hong Daozi, Shifu of Taiji Men Qigong Academy, who has devoted his life to promoting love and peace, so that we can educate ourselves and our next generations with peace and love in mind and through behaviors. In September 2000, Dr. Hong Daozi founded Four Power, Federation of World Peace and Love in the United States. He took his disciples and volunteers to visit countries around the world. Through thousands of cultural exchanges, summits, and ringing, and, and ringing of the World Love and Peace Bell, he promoted the concept of love and peace to important leaders and hands of states, hoping to promote the world love and peace. From this data, Dr. Hong Daozi is world influential leader who is worthy of respect and learning from all people around the world. However, December 19, 1996, Prosecutor Ho Quan Ren led a large number of 
state prosecutors and the media heavily armed and searched Tai Jinmen academies and prosecuted Dr. Hong Daozi with the rationale of raising the little goats. It's really ridiculous and even a harassment. On July 13, 2007, after three judicial trials, the court concluded that Tai Jinmen is innocent and under no obligation to pay income tax for monetary gift to Dr. Hong. However, so far, their original tax sanction have not been revoked. Last year, Tai Jinmen's sacred land was auctioned off by Administrative Executive Office. When I look back at Tai Jinmen Falls, case over the past 25 years. I think the government officials failed to comply with the laws. Some officials illegally abuse power of taxation to the people and they should apologize to the people they serve. Tai Chi Man Ford case is just the tip of iceberg of these illegal acts. And beside Tai Chi Man case, Many unjust cases are still taking place in Taiwan. In order to revoke unjust cases and false cases, Tai Chi Man did have been fighting for 25 years. I hope that government can examine current judicial and tax laws that are not in line with fairness and justice, so that we can live in a country with legal protection. Government officials should also strictly abide the law and perform their official duties in order to stand up good examples for our children and gain the trust of the people. If there is wrong behavior, it should be corrected and improved immediately. I hope the government officials can have conscience in mind and behave by following the laws to preserve our democracy, freedom, and taxpayers' human rights, which are critical and essential to support our national development for our next generation. Thank you all. Thanks for Winnie's sharing. As a young mother of two young children, we certainly understand and recognize the worries from Winnie for asking a better future for her babies with justice, freedom, and human rights. And of course, love and peace. So now, let's welcome our second speaker, Mr. Albert Lin, the senior technical consultant, who is also Tai Chi Man Di Zi, to share his observations and learnings. So let's welcome Albert. Love is simple. It is just peace. Hello everyone, I am Albert Lin. In 2016, my wife and I had the honor to become Tai Chi Men Di Zi under Shifu Dr. Hong Dao Zi. Tai Chi Men is a martial arts academic with full of positive energy. We follow Shifu Dr. Hong Dao Zi to cultivate morality learn to prevent evil and promote goodness, learn how to be good and quit badness, say good words and do good deeds, and distinguish between right and wrong. The return is not only physical health, but also the inspiration of mentality. In the year 2000, Tai Chi Men was invited to participate in the Sydney Olympic cultural exhibition to promote the Chinese contentions of Qigong and martial arts. Tai Chi Men has visited 101 countries over the years to promote the concept of love and peace via more than 3,000 performances worldwide. Tai Chi Men is the pride of Taiwanese culture. Allow the world to see Taiwan's positive attitude towards friendliness. However, on December 19, 1996, such a martial art religious group 
became the victim of a wrongful case purposely created by the government to crack down a religious group. Prosecutor Ho Kwan Ren, based on false reports, illegally break in to search the Tai Chi Man academics and residents of Dizhi and accused Tai Chi Man fraud and tax evasion. He falsely accused Tai Chi Man had the fraudulent incomes and requested the court to confiscate them in accordance with the law. However, on the other hand, he falsely accused Tai the teacher's monetary gift to Sifu as income or tuition fee and base revenue and transfer to the IRS for illegal taxation. The investigation later of Control Yuan attached the investigation opinion, detailing a viola major violation of Prosecutor Ho Kwan Ren and determined that the indictment and the evidence not conforming to the law of evidence. After 10 years and three months of trial by the court, the third instant verdict adjudicated that Tai Chi Man was not guilty and test free in 2007. In 2019, the IRS has corrected the five year taxation related to the teacher salute to zero. Only the 1992 tax bill was not corrected to zero. The Taipei High Administrative Court issued two letters in May and July 2020, stating that 1992 comprehensive tax should be treated as the same as those of other years and related to zero. However, the Xinzhu branch of the Administrative Enforcement Agency announced the option of Tai Chi Man Land on June 30, 2020. It turned out that the Xinzhu branch and the shooting branch of the Administrative Enforcement Agency were discussing performance bonus for the option of Tai Chi Man's land as early as March 2020. Everything was just for the trick of tax taxation performance bonus. The Administrative Enforcement Agency and the IRS indeed knew that Tai Chi Man's 1992 tax bill was illegal and fake. However, they conducted together illegally to auction Tai Chi Man's land. Even more, they did realize that the whole Execution procedure is illegal and already caused the crime of illegal expropriation. They still ignore the truth and directly nationalized the Tai Chi Man's land after the second forcible option was failed. For 25 years, the Tai Chi Man unjust, wrong, and false case is indeed the 228 incidents in history of Taiwan law and taxation. The government advocates transitional justice. As long as there is love, it is not difficult. Treating people's affairs as their own will not allow the IRS and administrative enforcement agency over and over again to friend and ravage people's organization. If there is no love in the heart of those in power, it is shameful to the people and shameful on the human right of law and tax. Transitional justice is really just an empty talk. Today, this nature responds to the international love and peace moves. Love is very simple. It is just peace. I appeal the reform of the government to stand on the best of practice of justice and justice for the people, and to return the people the dignity of legal tax and the taxpayers' human rights, so that it is the government for the people of Taiwan. I look forward to those in power who has courage to correct the historical mistakes, redress the cases of Tai Chi Man and all taxing victims, cancel the unreasonable taxing performance bonus. I even look forward to the tax reform so that the people will no longer be bullied by the taxing authority. Do the right thing bravely with love. Thanks for our sharing. As Arbor highlighted in the end, if everyone can do the right thing bravely with love, peace can be easily achieved. Taiji Man is certainly a wonderful example. However, Taiji Man continues suffering the illegal tax bills, even though three judicial trials have concluded that Taiji Man is innocent and without any tax obligations for the monetary gift. So last but not the least, 
Let's invite our third speaker, Sabir Zhang, college student from the University in Japan, to share her observations on the Taijiman false case from an exchange student perspective. Let's welcome Sibyl. Hello, everyone. I'm Sibyl. I'm from Taiwan, and I am an international student at a Japanese university. Um, I always believe that I am a member of the Earth. No matter it will become better or worse in the future, everyone is involved. And we are all independent from each other. So if everyone can show a little love and pay some attention to others, or give a hand to somebody who needs help, I believe it will become a peaceful world, and we will be happy here. Recently, I'm very concerned about the human rights cases that occur internationally. Particularly, Taiwan is my home country. I am more concerned about the development of Taiwan while I'm studying overseas. And on September 2021, is Love and Peace Month. I hope that all people in the world can live peacefully. However, I have seen Taiwan taxpayer human rights persecution cases which have appeared in the international media, especially the Taijinmen case. The fraud case has been harassing Taijinmen for more than 25 years and has never been stopped. And while I discussed the case with my classmate overseas, I was really frustrated. Now the court has cleared that Tai Jinmen was found not guilty and tax free. So why was the tax case so delayed? And why it cannot be resolved? Some of my friends asked me like, isn't Taiwan a beacon of ancient democracy? Or asked me like, isn't Taiwan National Human Rights Commission just established? Seriously, I was really spe speechless. So I paid more attention to uh, the Tai Jinmen case. And as an overseas student, I love my country. I want to re return to my country to find a good job and live with my family. And I don't want to be wandering overseas all the time. But I have also noticed that Taiwan tax system for foreign businessmen is quite unfriendly. Like the official in tax bureau, they can choose what they want to interpret the law. And um, so they're scaring off many international companies in Taiwan. And also the official in tax bureau got more power than the courts. So I wonder, does it confirm to the spirit of democracy and the rule of law? I really don't understand. And because of the opacity of the tax system, um, there are many foreign investment has been withdrawn. For example, the former of UMC that went to Singapore to set up a factory right there in Taiwan. And like other company like Han Ten or also Giordano, they went to withdraw the their capital in Taiwan, and it's all because of the inconsistent taxation standard, and they also don't know what to do. So, if all the large international company withdraw from Taiwan one after another, how can I go back to, um, to Taiwan to find a job after graduation, and where is my future? And also, when foreign capital retreats, when government officials don't follow the rules seriously, how do I go back to Taiwan? Lastly, I would like to say, I typically hope that the official can listen to the voice from the people who pay the tax and financially support the official who are people's servants. Thank you. Thanks for Sibyl sharing as a college student. I think we should recognize the anxiety from a fresh person like Sibyl before they start to work. Reforming our legal and tax systems in Taiwan will be the essential part to support our young generations for their future success. Thank you, Winnie, Arbor, and Sibyl for sharing your observations, reflections, and concerns and very much appreciate all the audience online to join today's forum. To conclude, we are not trying to against our governments. On the contrary, we are fighting and shouting out to revolt Taijiman's lonely case case. 
so that the Taiwanese government can really drive toward to a country with inherently transitional justice on taxpayers' human rights. We sincerely hope that Taiwan can further transform to become a wonderful country with true freedom, democracy, and human rights, where we can continue promoting love, peace, conscience around the world based on this critical foundation. Thank you very much for your active participation and wish you all have a good day. Goodbye and see you soon. Thank you.